Everybody, please move to the front of the church. And we're going to do page number 261. I love my Savior too. I mean, 261. I mean, love lifted me. 261, 261. I'm sorry. Two sixty one. Thank you for your cooperation as far as moving up. Let us all sing. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained with I was sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry, and from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. His love lifted me when nothing else could help. His love lifted me. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I cling. I in his blessed his presence live, ever his praises sing. A love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best song. A faithful loving service to, to him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me. Oh, when nothing else could help, his love lifted me. His love lifted me. His love lifted me. Oh, when nothing else could help, his love lifted me. And souls in danger look above. Jesus completely says, uh, he will lift you by his love uh, out of the angry wave. Uh, he's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. And he, your Savior, wants to be, be saved today. His love lifted me. His love lifted me. Oh, when nothing else could help, his love lifted me. His love lifted me. His love lifted me. Oh, when nothing else could help, his love lifted me. Let the church say amen. amen. Number, uh, well, we're going to sing falling in love. We're not, it's not a number. So, Falling in love with him. Let us together sing. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. You know I keep falling in love with him over and over and 
again, over and over again. You know he gets sweeter and sweeter as the day goes by. And oh, what a love between my Savior and I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. My Savior keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. You know he keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. My Jesus gets sweeter and sweeter as the day goes by. And oh, what a love between Savior and I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. You know he keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. My Savior keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. You know he gets sweeter and sweeter as the day goes by. And oh, what a love between my Savior and I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Yes, I was a little premature. Now we're going to do 262. <laughs> yeah. 262, I love my Savior too. Grace be with all of them that love our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 6 and 24. Two sixty two. I love my Savior, too. <clears throat> oh, why did I get it? Let us all sing. Jesus, my heavenly King, he loves me, I know. Praises to him I sing as onward I go. Closely to him I claim blessing. So flow, you know that I love my Savior too. You know that I love my Savior. Uh, he loves me too. I seek his favor uh, in everything I do. Oh, walking with him each day, love light does shine. Uh, doing his will always, thy love And uh, Kneeling to him I pray, thy will now. You know that I love my Savior too. You know that I love my Savior. And he loves me too. Oh, I seek his favor in everything I do. I'm happy to serve my friend, lean on his arm. Rapture will never end, nothing alarm. Voices will sweetly blend under his charm. And I love my Savior too. You know that I love my Savior. And he loves me too, and I seek his favor uh, in everything I do. You know
know that I Seek his favor in everything I do. Good morning, Maypole, Good morning. friends and family. Today's scripture is taken from the book of Mark. The chapter is 12, and the verses are 28 through 30. Again, that's Mark 12. <coughs> verses 28 through 30. I'm going to invite you to read along with me. Again, it's Mark 12, verses 28 through 30. And we'll all arrive there. Let the church say amen. 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 And it reads, And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first commandment, the first of all the commandments is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. I have read into your hearing from the book of Mark, chapter 12, verses 28 through 30 for the edifying of our souls. May the Lord continue to add a blessing to the reading of his word as well as to the hearers and the doers. Mm -hmm. I'll now ask that you stand as we be led in prayer by our own Brother London. Thank you, Brother Brown. If you don't mind, draw your, bow your head with me, church, together as we go before this God that we serve. From everlasting to everlasting, thou our God, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. Lord, we come this morning, Lord, for no other reason, Lord, but to uh, give you some honor, some praise. We come this morning, Lord, looking for your guidance that whatever we're going through, Lord, we can count on that what is being said and going to be done here this morning, we can say it was all God. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us, individually and collectively. Mm -hmm. Oh, Heavenly Father, uh, I, we come this morning, Lord, because we know there's trouble on every side. Okay. But we, we, we won't be forsaken. We won't stop trying to love you, Lord, in spite of what is going on in our lives. Okay. Thank you, Father, because you're the one who told us if you seek the kingdom and all your righteousness, all of these other things will be added unto thee. Oh, Heavenly Father, it, it is you who have made us, not we ourselves. Yes, sir. Thank you, Father, for just doing what you have done. And then, Lord, I know we're coming this morning, Lord, there's some of us who have gone on vacation. There's some, Lord, is already out there. And then, Lord, we, there's, a, there's a holiday coming up. But, Lord, we ask that you protect all of us, yes. that we might go through these holidays, Lord, with no hurt, harm, nor danger. Well, we're just thanking you, Lord, because we know, God, if you could save them before us, you can save us Amen. now. Praying, Lord, that there's someone in the audience this morning who know not Jesus and know yet he come for one thing, but, Lord, you can show him that there's another God that he can serve and obey it and be true to it. Amen. Thank you, Father, for who you are. Amen. And then, Lord, right now we're just praying, Lord, for your man servant as he come before us, Lord, as he always has came before us now. To spread a word that somebody might understand it before they leave out of here. Yeah. And then the rest of us, Lord, might grab it and share that love with somebody who know not Jesus. Right. Forgive us all for our sin and shortcomings. Mm -hmm. Not because of how good we are, but because of how good you have been to us. This prayer we ask in the name of your son, my Savior, Jesus Christ. Let the church say amen. 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 
Let the church say amen. 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 Number, number 653 will be the next selection. Number 653. It says sing and be happy. And since we're in this dynamic December, we want to make sure we sing and be happy. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Rejoice and sing praise. Psalms 98 and 4. Number 653. We have the selection. Let us together sing. If the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem great all the whole day through, there's a silver lining that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and see it, my friend. Trust in his promises, grand. Now sing and be happy. Press on or to the goal. Now trust him who leads you, and he will keep your soul. Now let um uh, be faithful. Look to a hymn and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Now often we are troubled and tired, sick with sorrow and pain. And there are others living in Oh, blessed with earthly gain. Uh, take new courage. We cannot tell what tomorrow may bring. Uh, when the dark clouds vanish away, uh, then your heart truly can sing. Now sing and be happy. Press on now to the goal. Now trust him who leads you and he will uh, keep your soul let all uh, be faithful look to a uh, him and pray now lift your voice and praise him in song sing and be happy today now off we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky and when it seems the fortunes of earth frown and pass us by take Courage, we cannot tell what tomorrow may bring. When the dark clouds vanish away, then your heart truly can sing. And I'll sing and I'll be happy. Press on to the goal. Now trust him who leads you. He will. I keep your soul let on I be faithful look to him and pray voice and praise him in song sing and be happy today we are going to do page number 455 I'll live in glory. I'll live in glory. Four, five, five. <clears throat> Let us all together sing. <clears throat> I'd like to stay here longer than men's allotted day and watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven way. But if my Savior called me to that sweet home on high, I'll live with him forever in glory by and by. Oh, yes, I live in glory, glory by and by. 
out tell and sing the story tell. There on high, there with my dear Redeemer. No more, no more to die. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory, glory, by and by. I want to be of service along this pilgrim way and lead the lost to Jesus as fervently I pray. As day by day I travel, I'll keep them ever nigh and live with them forever in glory by and by. Oh, yes, I live in glory, glory by and by. Oh, I'll tell and sing the story of oh, their own. On high, there with my dear Redeemer, there's no more, no more to die. Oh, yes, I live in glory, glory, by and by. The end I know is nearing, by faith I look away to yonder homes supernal, that land of endless day. I'll cling to him forever and look beyond the sky and spend the endless ages. In glory by and by, oh yes, I live in glory, glory by and by. What oh, tell and sing the story there on high, there with my dear Redeemer. There's no more, no more to die. Oh yes, I live in glory by and by. Good morning. Good to see everybody on this morning. Uh, let's let's sing. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore, adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore, adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore. Door him, Christ, Christ, Christ the Lord. Oh, come, oh, come, let us adore, adore him. Oh, come, let us adore, adore him. Oh, come, let us adore, adore him, Christ, Christ, Christ the Lord, for he alone, for he alone is worthy, for he alone is worthy. Worthy for he alone is worthy. He is Christ, Christ, Christ the Lord. Oh, come, oh, come, let us adore, adore him, oh, come. Let us adore, adore him, oh, come, let us adore him. He is Christ, Christ, the, for he alone can save us, for he uh, Long can save, save us for he alone can save, save us for he alone can save, save us he is Christ, Christ, Christ the Lord. We'll praise your name, Lord. We'll praise your name forever. We'll praise your name forever. We'll 
praise your name forever. He is Christ, Christ, Christ the Lord. Oh, come, oh, come, let us adore, adore him, oh, come, let us adore, adore him, oh, come, let us adore, oh, him, he's Christ, Christ, Christ the Lord. He certainly is, certainly is worthy of our praise, isn't he? Amen, amen. We're so delighted to see all of you who have come out this morning. We pray that you came for no other reason than to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. We thank God for this another opportunity, a privilege granted to us. As my brother often says, not because we've been so good but because he's been good to us. Amen, amen. We just thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the breath in our lungs, for the privilege and the ability to be able to put one step in front of the other. Amen. If you ain't never been flat on your back, you don't know how great a privilege that is to be able to put one foot in front of the other. I tell you all the time, there's millions of people who would trade places with you right now to be in the presence of the saints worshiping our God and praising his son, Jesus the Christ. I think the Lord blessed us enough. We ought to bless him back. What you think? Help me out this morning. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. <laughs> oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us, let us, let us exalt his name together. Amen, amen. Had a little misfire there. Out of, amen. It, we, we, we thank God for this day. We, we, know that, we know that the weather outside is frightening. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. But we, we, just, we, just, we just thank God for this day. Do you know of a more pressure-packed deadline uh -huh. than Christmas Eve? Come on, man. I mean, it, it just, it's just all the pressure. You got to be done. Now, the brothers are saying Valentine's Day. I got that. I, I I got that, I got that. But 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 Christmas Eve hits everybody, and I I pray that I pray that some are not out there taking the Lord's money, and and giving it giving it to Santa Claus. <laughs> amen, amen. We we're just so thankful. We're thankful for for this another privilege. I, I I'm so glad to have uh, my son and his wife. Uh, in town, amen. amen. Already got my gift, amen. He he even brought his brought his little dogs. My little grand dogs is in the house, amen. Amen. They they running around raising a thousand dollars worth of sand, but that's all right. We we just 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 glad to see him. They, amen, amen. Uh, this morning, this morning. Uh, from the passage that has been chosen, uh, Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 30. And one of the scribes came, <clears throat> and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, 
the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Now, this morning we're going to challenge you. With, oh, come, let us adore him. <clears throat> How wonderful it is to celebrate. Celebrations don't come after losses, only after victories. Celebrations are not the product of bad times, but celebrations are appropriate in good times. You don't celebrate when you're hurt. You celebrate when you've been healed. You don't celebrate when you're sad. You, you celebrate when you're glad. That's right. And since it's all a, because of Christ that, that we have good times and that we are healed and that we are glad and we do have the victory, it's time for us to celebrate. Right. Right. Yeah. He is the source of our joy. Yeah. When you celebrate, you celebrate the source, the reason. Christ is the reason for our celebration. This month, we've celebrated Christ with acclamation. We've celebrated the Christ with affirmation. We've celebrated the Christ with anticipation. And today, we celebrate the Christ with adoration. Soon, the world will gather around trees and presents to Celebrate the birth of Christ. We don't know when he was born, but we know he was born. Isn't that all right? If he had not been born, he could not have died. Amen. And, and because, because he was born, we ought to celebrate his birth. For even God celebrated his birth. Luke chapter 2. Chapter 1, chapter 2, verse 1. Uh -huh. I want to read this, and I want you to listen attentively and prayerfully. Well. In that text, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. the Bible reads, and it came to pass uh -huh. Uh -huh. in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus. Uh -huh that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night, came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly, 
there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward me. That, that ought to listen to celebration right there. God himself sent an angelic choir to celebrate the birth of his son. The shepherds were afraid. He said, fear not, for I bring you great tidings of great joy, because the son of David is born today in Bethlehem. We ought to be glad today. We ought to be glad that the Lord thought enough of us. Him in my soul Now some folk may die Some folk may scorn Church all can desert And just leave and leave me alone Leave me alone But as for me I'm going to take God's word, oh my God is real, for I can feel him in my soul, and don't you know God is real, church is real in my soul. My God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. Church is love for me. Well, it's just like pure gold. And my God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. Now I cannot tell just how you felt when Jesus was your sin away, your sins away. But since that day, Yes, since that hour, my God has been real, for I can feel his holy power. And don't you know God is real? Church.
church is real in my soul. My God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. Church is a love for me. Well, it's just like pure gold. And my God is real, for I can feel. Him in my soul. Well, don't you know God is real? Church is real in my soul. My God is real, for He has washed and made me whole. Church is love for me. Well, it's just like pure gold, and my God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. Amen. It's a blessing just to be here today, especially on all that snow out there, people driving like they lost their minds, but the Lord blessed us all to get here. So that's the blessing in and of itself. We take it for granted that we're here. But we are here because God blessed us to be here safely this morning. Trouble in my way. I got to cry sometimes. Church, I've got so much trouble. Just got to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. But that's all right Cause don't you know that my Jesus huh, After a while Trouble in the street We gotta cry sometimes Cause we've got so much trouble We gotta cry sometimes well, I lay, awake at night. I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. But that's all right. Cause don't you know that my Jesus, I said you know that my Jesus, don't you know that my Jesus,
Jesus being tested. He's being examined. He's being questioned. He's being interrogated. He's being grilled. One faction after another comes at Jesus with questions. If you back up to chapter 11, he, he's going into the temple and, and the priests and the, the elders say, well, what authority by what authority are you doing these things? And he said, I'll answer you if you answer me. Where did John's baptism come from? And they left him alone. Then he moved on and, and he ran into, he ran into some, sad, some Pharisees. And the Pharisees wanted to know some things. And, and Jesus, said, Jesus said, no, I'm not going to tell you these things. I'm going to tell you some other things. Start giving them parable after parable. And, and then they sent, sent some Herodians out of the Pharisee. They say, they say, do we give to Caesar? And Jesus says, show me the coin. Whose picture is on there? Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And then he spoke parable after parable. And then the scribes came. The scribes came. The scribes were, were, were those who, who copied the law. They were the ones who, who, who made, made copies of scripture. They, 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 were, they were the ancient copying machines. They were, they were to write what was written on this scroll onto another scroll. They were very meticulous about their duty. They would often pause and count words and count letters and make sure that the same number of words on the original are the ones that they copied. And if you ever sure, I'm writing it the correct way to make sure I'm copying it as it is originally written. So, so these, were the, these were the scholars. These were the experts. They had read scripture over and over and over and over again as they tried to copy from one, from one parchment to another. So they came and Jesus said, tell us this. We, we, we heard you answer all these other fellas. We, we heard what they asked. and We, we, we heard what you said. And, and we believe you answered them well. But answer me this. What is the first commandment? They, they had been writing all that Jehovah had said before. They had been writing all the instructions he had given to Moses and all of the direction he had given to Israel. And they said, what is the first commandment? And, and Jesus says, the first commandment is to hear, O Israel, the Lord our Lord, God is one Lord. You, 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 you got to remember, they just came out of a society that worshiped everything under the sun along with the sun. They worshiped the water. 
They worship the fields. They worship the sun, the moon, and the stars. They worship the animals. They worship the wind. They worship everything they could find looking for favor. And God brought his people out of that kind of situation. He said, don't get it twisted. Ain't but one of me. I'm the only one. And because I am the only one, you don't need to distribute your love amongst a number of others. You can love me with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, and all of your strength. We, we, we'll, be, we'll be able to be, get some help. But see, you can't make step number two. But Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. I want to thank my minister, Dr. Danny Harrison, in a way, hopefully, getting some much needed rest. He and Sister Harrison, hopefully, God is blessing them this morning. They are able to relax and just hear the word of God preached. Amen. Because that's a, a luxury for a preacher. To sit back and hear some good preaching on Sunday morning. Just to be able to hold your wife's hand. Just relax. But God has been good to each and every one of us. It may not be 65 degrees outside today. The sun may not be shining bright. You may not need sunglasses today. We may not have that son, but we have the son of God, the son of the living God. Amen. Watching over us. And so we come together to celebrate that season that we call Christmas. We know that no man knows the actual date of birth of Jesus Christ, our Savior. That's the subject for another, for a Bible class. Amen. We have to go way, way, way back. Amen. To talk about when the church first started. Amen. But I don't have time, but I would like to share a word with you this morning. I want to get on to my lovely wife. Amen. Kenneth Martin. He preached a good sermon to me this morning. Amen. I had to use, I had to steal a little bit. Amen. All right. Amen. 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 How can we talk about Jesus is the reason for the season? And not overlook that young virgin named Mary. Amen. I want to thank all the brothers who have participated in the worship service thus far. And I hope not to be long, but I hope to be strong. And as I ask the Lord, ask the Holy Spirit to help me to say the words that he would have me to say today. My thoughts in the Bible, my attention turn to a virgin named Mary. You know, in the Gospels, Matthew, they say, tells the story from Joseph's side of the birth of Jesus. And the Gospel writer Luke tells the story of the birth of Jesus from Mary's side. And so after pondering a bit on should I look at Mary or should I look at Joseph? I came to Mary and I wanted to talk a little bit this morning about perhaps something that we have overlooked but which is a great statement of faith. When Mary said in Luke chapter 1 around verse number 37 Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. 
Let it be to me according to your word. Jesus, who he is, matters more than anything in history. It has been said all the armies that ever marched and all the navies that were ever built and all the parliaments that ever sat and all the kings that ever reigned put together have not affected the life of man upon this earth as powerfully as Jesus. A baby born in a manger in a stable in Bethlehem who came that we might have life and have it more abundant. Christmas. We celebrate. It means many things to many people. But after we do some shopping, some wrapping, some baking, some eating and drinking, some worrying and wondering, how am I going to pay these credit cards? Some people have forgotten about the reason for the season and the person they are celebrating. Some people are celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ without it. Some people are giving out gifts but forget about the precious gift, the greatest gift that God has given them. At the Right moment in time. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 4 and around verse number 4. I believe it says that in the fullness of time. But when the fullness of time was come. God sent forth his son. Made of a woman. Made under the law. To redeem them. That's us. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. How can we talk about Jesus and the reason for the season and celebrating without including them? Amen. So if you don't mind turning the pages of your manuscript, your holy scriptures, to the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 1, okay. around verse number 26. That's Luke, chapter 1, around verse number 26. There's a story there. From verses number 26 to verses number 38, there's a story there. And that sometimes we just don't pay too much attention to. It starts at in the sixth month of, it says, and in the sixth month, the angel, Gabriel, was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And, behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall 
be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called Mary. Get this. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Mary. That's a great statement. In verse 38. I don't know how it's going to happen. I know not a man. She didn't laugh like Sarah to herself. She just said, I don't know how yeah. it's going to happen. <coughs> she said, but mm -hmm. I don't understand, oh, but I believe. Yeah. She demonstrated a willing spirit and a heart to believe that God could do uh -huh. anything. What was impossible yeah. with me? Oh, Amen. It's possible uh -huh. with God. Yeah, For with God, as we look back in 2017, uh -huh. look over your shoulder and see how you could not have made it from January to December. You don't know what January is going to hold next year. But you made it from January to December because God was with you. For with God. We don't ask that you move the mountain. We ask that you give us the strength, the courage to climb the mountain. Until we get to the top of that mountain. We may have started out in January. We didn't know how am I going to get to the top of that mountain. But thanks be to God. Amen. With God, nothing shall be impossible. All right. We just have to be like Mary and say, Behold, here am I. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 26. That's what Isaiah said when the Lord said, Who shall go uh -huh. for me? Man. Isaiah said, Behold, he said, Here am I, Lord. Make the plane, huh? Here am I. Yes. Send me. All right. Yeah. That can have many, many applications in our life. As we prepare to celebrate tomorrow the birth of Jesus, Christmas is what they call it. Amen. And as we prepare to give gifts 
And as we prepare to receive gifts, uh -huh. don't you know, church, the greatest gift you can give okay. is to introduce somebody to Jesus. Amen. Don't you know, church, Amen. the greatest gift that you can receive, mm -hmm. you can't earn it. You can't buy it. It's eternal life. But the Bible says that for God so loved the world, uh -huh. And he gave his only begotten son. Right. Gave is a gift. You didn't buy it. Uh -huh. You didn't earn it. Uh -huh. For God so loved you mm -hmm. that he gave the greatest gift. Uh -huh. His son. That whosoever believeth uh -huh. in him should not perish. What? That's a traditional statement. Should not. Here. But have everlasting life. I don't know what's under the Christmas tree for me tomorrow. Amen. You don't know what might be under the Christmas tree for you tomorrow. But you already received the greatest gift that was given to man. If God is good and wakes us up tomorrow. We've already received the grace. One more day. One more day. That we can say, Here am I, Lord. Use me. Christmas is not about what you receive. Amen. Let me just get back to the whole story. Uh -huh. Looking at the big picture. When we look at the big picture, Deacon Ross, we got to go all the way back to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. Oh, when we look at the big picture, uh -huh. before we even get to a stable, to a manger in Bethlehem, okay. when we get to the big in Genesis chapter 3. Uh -huh. okay. And we see how that God had a plan. Like that, yeah. In verse number 15. Mm -hmm. When he puts the curse upon Satan and says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, yeah. <coughs> and between thy seed and her seed. And her seed. Don't miss that. Right. Her seed. Uh -huh. It shall bruise thy head. Yeah. And thou shalt bruise his heel. Yeah. Now, my Bible says that her seed uh -huh. is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Her seed uh -oh. was not his seed, uh -huh. but her seed was not a man's seed, but her seed was because she was overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. She couldn't understand it. She asked the angel Gabriel, but how? But how can this be? But yet she had faith to say, Behold, I'm your handmaid. Be it with me, even as you say. Amen. And so, when we look at that big picture, it was already set. The plan was already made. But we have to go to Isaiah chapter 7 just to get a yeah. A little glimpse. Okay. You know how they they want to give you a little preview yeah. mm -hmm. of what the movie's going to not be about? Okay. We see it, I, I believe it is chapter 14. I'm sorry, Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. I believe it is around Isaiah chapter 7 and verse number 14. Okay. And it says, Therefore, and what's there for there for? Because something preceded it. Amen? Therefore, you see, there was a prophet named Isaiah. And there was a king of Judah named Ahaz. And Ahaz was a weak king. Amen? He didn't worship God the way he should have worshipped God. His faith in God was weak. 
But what happened was that instead of turning to God, Ahaz turned to Assyria, turned to man. Instead of relying on God to protect Judah, Ahaz put his faith in the king of Syria. And so when you read chapter 7, if you just look at verse number 10, Sister Dean, if you just look at verse number 10 where it says that, Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Amen. And what did the Lord say? Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahab was a weak king. Ahab said, I will not ask. Neither will I tempt the Lord. And so he said, Hear ye now, O house of David. Is it a small thing for you to weary men? Mm -hmm. But will you weary my God also? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. That's what the therefore is there. Yeah. God said, I'm going to give you a sign. Just ask me. Mm -hmm. And he told Gideon, and Gideon said, well, make the fleece wet. Mm -hmm. And God made the fleece wet. And then Gideon said, well, I want another sign. Make the fleece dry. Yeah. And God made the fleece dry. So God is telling Ahaz, the king of Judah, he says, I'm going to give you a sign. Ask me anything you will in the heights or in the depths, and I'll do it. And Ahaz said no, but he didn't have faith. And so Isaiah is saying, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. That's part of the picture. Amen. So then we go to our text, which was Isaiah 9 and 6. Amen. Just to get a little context. Where it says in Isaiah 9 and 6. A familiar passage of scripture. Point to us. A child is born. Unto us. A son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonder, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen? Let's just get a picture of what we have to celebrate. It's not about gifts under the tree. Amen? It's not about going shopping. It's not about eating and drinking. Amen? But it's about the greatest gift ever given us, ever given to man. And how we have access to his grace. Amen? Amen. That you have your very being. Serves loving with all your mind, intelligently, under the guidance of God's word. And then love him with all your strength, all with intensity and energy. Love the Lord with all you have. All you enjoy is because of the Lord. All that you have is because of the Lord. All we hope to inherit is because of the Lord. So we got to love the Lord with all that we got. We know that God loves us. Somebody give me Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse number 12. We know that God loved us. And we know because the Bible tells us that he loved us. He loves us in spite of us. Isn't that all right? In spite of the ways that we act, he loves us anyway. In spite of all of our weaknesses, he loves us anyway. And so we know that he loves us. As we celebrate the Christ during this holiday season, our thoughts ought to be centered on showing our love to him because he's already showed his love to us. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse number 12. 
What does the Bible say? And now, read. Israel. Read. What doth Lord? Oh, read. What, Go ahead. What doth the Lord require? What does the Lord require of thee? Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. Fear the Lord thy God. To read. walk in all His ways. Read. And to love Him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart. I read. And with all thy soul. With all thy heart and with all thy soul. Read. To keep the commandments of the Lord. To keep the commandments of the Lord. Read. And his statutes. Read. Which I command thee Read. this day for thy good. For thy good. Be he said God oh. doesn't require anything more from you but first to love him and keep his commandments. That's right. And he's given them to you for your good. Good. Did everybody see that up? It's for your good. As a child growing up out here all the time for my if you know what's good for you. Anybody ever heard that in their house? If you know what's good for you, you'll do such and such. Or you'll avoid so and so. If you is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. Yes, sir. It sounds. Is that what we say? Yes, what we, say. we do love Jesus, the right hand of the Father. We believe he is mediating between us and God right now. We believe that he's coming back and he's going to take us home with him. In fact, we look for it with anticipation. We're looking forward to his return. But do you not realize that just saying you love Jesus is not enough? Yeah. I learned a long time ago, actions really do speak louder than words. My, 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 my good friend, Brother Hudson, said you can make the mouth say anything. That's right. yeah. Saying you love Jesus is not enough because Jesus gave the parameters by which we can examine our love in John chapter 14. Verse number 15, he says, if you love me, Keep my commandments. Love for the Lord is evidenced by the keeping of his commandments. And that's consistent. Isn't that what Moses just told, told Israel in Deuteronomy? He said, he said, God requires you to love him and keep his commandments. If we don't keep God's commandments we're not really showing him that we love him now, now, now let me just let me just qualify this statement here because our lives are filled with mistakes errors lapses of judgment missteps in that all right anybody here ever willing to, to admit to themselves that you made some mistakes you was trying to do the right thing. It turned out to be the wrong thing, and it was too late to back up. Sometimes we weren't even trying to do the right thing. Is it still on? Sometimes, and prayerfully not all the time, but sometimes we didn't even care what the right thing was. I, I want you to know, errors do not diminish our love for the Lord. Mistakes are not fatal or final. Failure is not a rejection of the Lord, but refusal is a rejection of the Lord. In the flesh, when mistakes are made, most right-thinking individuals will try very hard not to make the same mistake again. Isn't that all right? Huh? And, and, and we, we, we know that. Anybody here ever been lost? You turn left at the corner, you should have turned right. 
You turn left and didn't find your destination. You, 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 you meander around and, and get back to that same point. You say, now I'm not going to turn left here again. Because I know left is not where I... Y'all understand what I'm talking about? Y'all ain't going to help me this morning? I, I, when I see where my error was, I'm not going to do that. And so when we look at our lives and we see errors and, and mistakes, we ought to try very hard not to do that same thing again. Get for me 1 John chapter 5. Honey, goodness, and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Jesus is the great shepherd. No. We know when we love God. And what? And keep his commandments. And that what Jesus says? If you love me, keep my commandments. Verse 3, what does the Bible say? This is the love of God. This is the love we show God. Read. That we keep his commandments. His commandments are not grievous. John says his commandments are not grievous. His commandments are not burdensome. His commandments are not heavy. His commandments are not restrictive. You see, too many people believe that being obedient to the Lord's commands are restrictive. If I become a Christian, I can't have no fun. Oh, that's it. I hear that a lot. I hear that a lot. Too. That's because they don't know nothing about the joy in Jesus. If I become a Christian, a whole lot of things I'm going to have to stop doing. Yeah, that's right. That's, but, but you know what? You ain't going to just have nothing to do. Jesus giving you a task. If you love me, you keep my commandments. See, it's hard, it's hard to tell folks just to stop doing something. Isn't that right? I mean, we're going to do something. Right? Stop doing this. Well, what am I going to do? Well, you got to replace what you're trying to remove. Isn't that all right? If you tell somebody you ought to stop cussing, that means, don't just stop talking. That means replace those words. But y'all smart. Y'all got that right off the bat. <laughs> Doctor tell you, stop eating pork. I see some heads dropping up in here. That don't mean just stop eating. It means replace. Yeah. Replace the bad with something good. So, so if you come to Jesus, Jesus said, I got some commandments for you, but they're not grievous. And so in order for you to show your love for me, you need to start replacing some of that. Yeah, some stuff we need to let go. And let, me, let, me, let, me, let me clarify. We need to let it go, not just put it away. Well, well, I, 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 just, I just turned on somebody's street. See, see, some stuff, you know, we got some stuff that's in a box on the shelf in the back of the closet. We don't use it regular, but we know where it's at. But then when we get to, get to spring cleaning, you ought to look at it and they say, I ain't going to use this no more. It's time for me to get rid of it. But we know how we do, right? We look at it, it still looks good. And we say, I'm going to put it. Y'all got it, y'all got it, y'all got it. And, and so that's what we ought to do with our character. There's some things in all of our characters that we need to look at and say, I ain't going to use that no more. I need to get rid of it. Instead, we just put it. K 
case I need it. When you keep his commandments, you don't have to do it all by yourself. That's the wonderful thing. God sends us heaven sent help of the Holy Ghost to help us to do what we need to do. We are protected by an awesome God and an all-powerful Savior. All parties of the Godhead are looking out for us. God gave his son. His son gave his life. The spirit gives us guidance. They're all trying to get us to get in lockstep with the commandments of God. When you keep his commandments, your past debt is paid. Your present stands in his grace. And your future is already prepared. When you keep his commandments, even your problems work out for the good. Keeping his commandments uh, requires being baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Uh, keeping his commandments uh, require you being added to the church that he built. But, brother preacher, how do I know which church Christ built? There's a church on every corner, and there's some two on a corner. There's big ones. Small ones, large, there's, there's, there's historical ones, there's brand new ones. There, 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 there's some that I kind of understand, some I don't even understand. Well, how do I know which is the right one? Jesus tells us who the right one is. Matthew chapter 18, verse number 16, upon this rock. I'm going to start about chapter 16, verse 18. Upon this rock, I will build my church. Jesus said uh, he going to build uh, his church. But the question remains, which church is it? Look at Matthew chapter 18. If you just start reading your Bible, you'll run into some other things about the church. Matthew 18, verse 17. The Bible says if you have a problem with your brother and you go to him and he won't listen, take him to the church. Okay, I got that, but which church do I take him to? You take him to the church, must be the church that Jesus built. Acts chapter 2, they law added daily to the church. What church? Must be the church I take my brother to. Must be the same church that Jesus built. Acts chapter 5. After the death of Ananias and Sapphira, the Bible said fear came upon all of the church. Well, which church? Well, how do I know which church is talking about? Must be the church the Lord added to. Must be the church we take our brother to. Must be the church that Jesus built. Acts chapter 8. After Stephen was stoned, persecution came on the church. I keep reading the church, but they don't tell me which church. How do I know? It must be the church where fear came on. It must be the church the Lord added to. It must be the church I take my brother to. It must be the church that Jesus built. Acts chapter 8, verse 3. Saul made havoc of the church. What church was he making havoc of? I keep reading church. It must be the church where persecution was. It must be the church that the Lord added to. It must be the church where fear came upon it. It must be the church that I take my brother to. It must be the church that Jesus built. Acts chapter 11, they heard that Grecians were saying the church rejoiced. Acts chapter 12, Herod vexed the church. Acts chapter 14, Peter ordained elders in every church. I keep reading church, but it don't tell me which church. Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 11, Acts chapter 12, Acts chapter 14, verse 18, chapter 15, chapter 20, chapter 16. I keep reading church, 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 churches. But don't tell me which church. And you keep on reading through Acts. You're running the Romans. Romans chapter 16, verse 1. Paul commends the church. Romans 16 and 5. He sends greetings to the church. But it's still having told me which church it is. I keep reading church. Church, the church. Churches, the church Christ built. Where is it at? Paul answers that question. Uh, when you get down to verse number 16, uh, you salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ. 
salute you. If you read the phone book, you'll get thoroughly confused. Don't even Google church. It'll blow your mind. But if you want to know what the Lord said, look in his word. He'll tell you which church. The church Christ built. He built it. He owns it. He married it. He bought it. He's the head of it. He's the foundation of it. He's the savior of it. It all belongs to Christ. So if you love the Lord, if you love the Lord, you ought to keep his commandments. When you see what he's done for others, realize he can do the same for you. It's easy to love him. When you've seen him do amazing things in your life, it's easy to love him. When you've seen him and tried him and he's come through, it gets easier and easier and easier to love him. But you got to know who you love and why you're loving him. We love him because of who he is. Because if he doesn't do anything else for us, he's still who he is. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? See, we, we, we praise him for what he's done. We thank him for one more day. Thank him for our life. Thank him for our family. We, we, we praise him for that. We thank him for bringing us through this snow and helping us to make it to worship this morning. We thank him because that car off to the side is not me. We praise him for that. But we worship him because of who he is. He is the son of God. He is the savior of the world. And sometimes we don't often get it. We think we got it, but we ain't got it. I heard, heard a story. Heard a story about a young man. He just got baptized. And, and he, he was looking at one of the older brothers in the church. And he, he said, you know what? I want to be faithful like brother so-and-so. He says, so I'm going to go out. I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to find out what his secret is. How did he remain faithful to the Lord all these years? Because I know a little bit about his life. You know, I grew up in the neighborhood. I know some things he had to suffer. I, I know some pain he felt. I, I know, and he stayed with the Lord. I'm going to go find out. So he went out to old brother's house, and he's sitting on the porch. He said, he said, bro, I need you to tell me, how did you hang on to the Lord through all that I know you went through? And no doubt you suffered some things I don't know nothing about. How did you hang in there? And when it looked like it had been easy just to give up. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know what, son? I learned how to hang on with the Lord from watching my dog. Mm -hmm. He said, he said, your dog. He said, how did your dog help you to learn to hang in there with the Lord? He said, one time I was sitting here with my dog on the porch and a rabbit ran across my yard. He said that dog jumped up and took off after that rabbit. He was barking and yelling and, and running and pretty soon other dogs in the neighborhood heard all the commotion and they joined in the chase and you should have seen them. They was jumping over fences and running through gangways just keeping up a lot of racket just barking and yelling and and running and trying to keep up they were just oh it was just a big commotion he said but pretty soon one after another started to drop off it was a pack of them pretty soon one by one they started to drop off from the chase he said, well, why do you think they started dropping off? He said, because they didn't know why they was running. See, see, my dog saw the rabbit. He knew why he was running. Everybody else jumped on the bandwagon when they heard the commotion, but they didn't know why they was running. So they ain't have no, st am I talking to anybody in here? Somebody up in here ought to know why you running. You ought to know why you hanging in there with the Lord. 
Not just because of the crowd. Not because everybody on their feet waving their hand. No, I know why I love the Lord. So somebody here this morning, somebody here this morning ought to decide, I'm not coming to the Lord because of all these people. I'm coming to the Lord because I know why I'm coming. Because I want to keep his commandments. Not because mama and auntie and cousin them. I come to keep his commandments. I do love the Lord. I do adore him. Because he's worth all that to me. So somebody here this morning, you need to make up in your mind, I'm going to keep his commandments right now. I'm going to be baptized. I'm going to be added to the church we just read about. The church I know I can find in the Bible. Well, Brother Walker, you know, there's other churches in the Bible. Yeah, well, it's not in there as a church. I used to go to New Bethlehem, but that ain't a church. What about Jordan River? That ain't a church. What about Greater New Greater? That ain't in the Bible. Y'all follow what I'm talking about? See, 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 we, 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 get, we, we get all twisted up in our own logic. If you want to serve the God you read about in the Bible, follow the Christ you read about in the Bible, go to the heaven you read about in the Bible, avoid the hell that you read about in the Bible, get some of the blessings you read about in the Bible, you ought to come to the church that's in the Bible. We know the church of Christ is in there. And we know that that's where salvation is. Jesus says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. You want to be saved today? Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ? Are you willing to repent of your sins and confess that, yes, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? If you do that, we will baptize you in water for the remission of your sins. And here's, here's another great part. I mean, all of it is great, but I like this part. The Lord will add you. You, you don't get to join. The Lord does the adding. He adds you. Acts 2.47. He adds you. Who does he add? Such as should be saved. Who should be saved? He that believeth. And he is baptized. Perhaps you're in the body. And you haven't been showing the Lord how much you really love him. Perhaps you haven't replaced some of those things that need to have been thrown out a long time ago. Amen. Amen. I, I remember uh, some years ago when, when, when I was svelte, when I was slender. When I was all tight and everything was, I, I bought a tuxedo. You know, we were going to different banquets and functions and things. So. I bought me a tuxedo, uh -huh. and it was tight. Yeah. <laughs> Brother Sam, that thing was sharp. Well, it had some shadow stripes in it, and the satin collar. It, 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 was, it was on. And, 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 and a few extra pieces of chicken. Some late night chips. I, I, I can't quite can't quite wear that tux no more. And 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 for a while, for a while, it just kept moving back and back and back in the closet. And then I told that common lie that I'm gonna get in it one of these days. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see you smiling. I, I know. That, that, that's why I say it's a common lie. Yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna fit this one time. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get back in this. Yeah, yeah. And and then and then uh, then I then I got a, a a storage closet. It moved from the main closet to the storage closet. I I, I know I ain't gonna fit it no more. I just don't want to get rid of it. Anybody got something like that? Uh? You, I know I ain't going to use it, no, but I just, I just don't. Every now and then I take it out. I still got my, my white suspenders on it. I just, I just hold up and look at it like, 
bam, and put it right back. If you come to my house, it's in that closet. Yes, sir. Right there, right now. Yes, sir. I know I ain't going to use it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And common sense tell me, get rid of it. Yes, sir. Anybody have common sense tell you to get rid of some stuff? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But we just don't want to get rid of it. I, I want to keep it. Yes. I remember when we was tight. Yes. I don't want to. Yeah, 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 you're right, I need to, but I don't. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. Let us, let us ask the Lord to help you. And if Sister Walker throw my tux out, y'all won't see her again. I, I, I just play it. But y'all, y'all follow what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? There's some stuff that we know we need to. Y'all come let church pray for you. Y'all come let us pray for you. We'll pray for you right now. If you're not a Christian, you need to be baptized. And you don't need to wait. You don't need to put it off. You don't need to delay. Because the longer you are outside of the ark of safety, you got a better chance of being lost. And it's a shame to be lost when somebody's telling you the way to go. Isn't that all right? I mean, it's one thing to get lost and you don't know where you're going. Yeah, but now we, you know, you know, now we got these talking GPSs. And they'll tell you which way to go. In 200 feet, turn left. That means get your silly self in the left-hand lane. Isn't that right? It's a turn left, and then you go past that and start recalculating. Go up to, to such and such street. Turn left there, and you don't turn left there. Make a U-turn. Pull over. Let somebody else drive. It talks to you, right? Somebody telling you which way to go right now. We're going to sing a song of encouragement. And that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to encourage you yes, sir. to come to Jesus. If you believe that Jesus is the Christ, if you're willing to repent of your sins and confess him as the son of the living God, we will baptize you. And the Lord will add you to the church. You need prayer? Why don't you come? Right now, as we together stand and as we sing, we ask you to come. I really love the Lord, the Lord. Oh, Is there somebody here? I somebody really needs to come. Love the Lord. Somebody needs to come and be baptized you don't know for the forgiveness of your done. sins. You don't know what somebody need to come to Jesus today for me. Gave me. Don't put it off. Gave me the come right now. Story, I love him. I if you need prayer, you ought to come down this aisle. Let the church pray for you. I, I really love Why don't you come? Lord. Why don't you come right now? Oh, I really, Do you love him? really love the Lord. Said I. Do you love him? I you really love him enough to keep his commandments? The you ought to come. Lord. Love the Lord. Oh, oh, I really love, really love. Gotta advertise this sale. Amen. It ain't about a new Lexus. Amen. It ain't about a new view. Amen. It ain't about all the perfume that comes out of Paris. It ain't about all the new clothes that come out of New York. All that's fine, well, and good. Amen. But you can't take none of that with you. When you get to the Chili River Jordan, you hope that Jesus is there to beat you and take you to the other side. Yeah. He's wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful counsel. Yeah. He will give you guidance. Yes. 
when you don't know where to go, where to turn. Amen. Right. He understands what you have to face. Because yes. well. he was tempted in every one of He's been down that road that you yeah. got to walk down. Yeah. He knows where the potholes are. Yeah. He walked where we have to walk. Yeah. He will be there for you. Yeah. All you got to do is have a little talk. Yeah. Have a little faith. Yeah. Meet me in the upper room, Lord. Yeah. When I get down on my knees and I pray. Uh -huh. For the Bible says, for we have not a high priest. Oh. Hebrews 4 and 15. For we have not. A high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity, all right. but was in all part, uh, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. He's waiting for you today. See, Jesus went to the cross so that we might have life. Yeah. He told his disciples before he went to the cross. He said. I'm going to send the company. He says, when the spirit of truth has come, uh -huh. he will guide you into all truth. Uh -huh. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Uh -huh. And he will show you all things to come. Uh -huh. He's a wonderful counselor. Yes, he He's the mighty God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? He gives you strength when you're too weak to make it. One more step. He's a mighty God. Do you need some strength today? To keep walking by faith and not by sight? Do you need some physical strength just to get out the bed this morning? God's word says to you, you can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens you. And when your strength seems to be sapped in the way, when it seems to be weakening, remember the words that Jesus told the disciples, all power in heaven and earth has been given to you. Yes, he's a wonderful counselor. And he's a wonderful, he's a mighty God. Yeah. But he's also an everlasting God. And Jesus told his, his disciple Philip. Uh -huh. He said, Philip, if you have seen me, mm -hmm. you have seen me. Amen? Amen. In John 14 and verse number 9. He's a wonderful counselor. And he's a mighty God. And he's an everlasting father. He's everlasting because his love lasts forever. You see, we earned, we didn't earn it. We received it as a gift. All we have to do is obey the gospel. Hear the gospel. Believe it with all your heart. Repent of your sin. Confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. And then go down into the watery grave of baptism. Where you contact the blood of Jesus Christ and your sins are washed away. And then you must walk. In the light of the As he is. Today is the acceptable day of salvation. I preached to you long enough. I preached to you from my heart. I just want you to know that nothing is impossible with God. Amen. And if God chooses you, to do, to be his hands, to be his feet. If God chooses you to be his spirit, well, then it's up to you to say, here I am, Lord. Send me. Amen? Amen. See, God doesn't make mistakes. When God chose Moses, Moses had some, some misgivings and some doubts. But God said, I've got Aaron right here. He's going to be your mouth. You see, God doesn't make mistakes. You are the right person that God has chosen uh -huh. to do his will. Oh, you are the one that God needs. Mm -hmm. And you are the one that God wants to see. You see, God will give you the courage that you need and the strength that you need that you thought you didn't have. Oh. Because with God, nothing oh. is impossible. Okay. You see, when a storm comes into our lives, whether it's a tornado or a hurricane, oh, yeah. with God, all things are possible. When the unexpected, when the unbelievable is waiting on your doorstep, when that incredible event breaks your hearts and shatters your dreams, Gabriel's promise is for us too. Uh -huh. Nothing shall be impossible okay. with God. Well. So don't give up. When you are faced with disease and illness, uh -huh. amen, nothing 
shall be impossible. Look at that. When you are confronted with the impossible, the unexpected, the unbelievable, react by saying, Come on. I'm going to wait on the Lord. Amen? I'm going to wait on the Lord. Don't give up. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. God is not a man that he should not. All we have to do is get out of God's way and let God's will be done in our life. Nothing shall be impossible with God. If we believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Amen. If you're not a member of the Lord's church, you can get right with God. Amen. You can come down here, make your confession that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God and we will take you and we will bury you in water, crucify you to your sins. God will take care of the rest. That's right. Amen. Jesus has done the hard part. Amen. He died on a cross at Calvary. He was buried in a bottle of tomb. But he got up out of that grave after three days and three nights. Sits at the right hand of God. Waiting for the day of the hour that no man knows. When time shall stand still and be no more. And he shall return in glory for his church. The church that he died for. The church that he gave his precious blood. When he comes back, will you be ready? When he comes back, will you be ready to receive him as your Savior, as your Lord? God with us. I'm begging, I'm pleading with you today. Don't let this day pass your mind. Today, no matter what person sitting next to you think. I don't matter what the person sitting behind you saying. The only thing that matters is what Jesus says. Come unto me. All of you that labor and are heavy labor and I will give you grace. Today, you need to come to Jesus. He that believeth and baptized shall be saved. Amen. You need to come to Jesus before he's everlasting and too late. Because tomorrow is not promised. We don't know if we will be here tomorrow. We don't know. When we sung our last hymn, prayed our last prayer, preached our last sermon. Amen. We don't know when we will draw our last breath. But Jesus is waiting for you today right now. Won't you come to him as we stand and sing a song of encouragement? Don't let this day pass you by. Jesus is waiting. Nothing is impossible with God. Jesus is waiting to receive you just this you are. Why don't you come give it to him? He's a mighty God. Wonderful counsel. Prince of peace. Everlasting God. You need to come to Jesus.
Sim. Sim.